Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, um, my name is Calvin Reed. I'm a senior news editor at Publishers Weekly. I am the editor of PW Comics World, PW's online comics and graphic novel cover, uh, coverage. And I'm also a co-host on More to Come, PW's weekly podcast on comics and graphic novel publishing. Check us out online, publishersweekly.com slash comics. That's use the commercial. Um, but I'm also <laughs> pleased to welcome you all to the 2020 Brooklyn Book Festival. We're here today with authors uh, Chris Grind, Kristen Guzman, Varian Johnson, Shannon Wright, uh, and uh, Maria Scrivan. Uh, and the panel is the Graphics Con panel uh, at Brooklyn Book Festival. Uh, we're celebrating 15 years of a really wonderful imprint for comics and graphic novel publishing aimed at uh, kids and young adults. Uh, and, and we're going to be looking at um, a panel that uh, a lot of the books really deal with friendship and friendship can be super complicated. It can be really intense, embarrassing, uh, especially when there are magical sketchbooks involved or aliens or family drama. And of course, we're gonna have all of that today. Uh, uh, we're, we're at, while we celebrate the 15th anniversary of Graphic Scholastic's awesome graphic novel imprint. Uh, so we'll be talking with um, uh, these, these wonderful authors today. And why don't we get started Right now, I'm going to um, start out uh, with uh, Chris Grime, uh, who is the author of the, the, the newly uh, adapted Animorph series, The Invasion. Uh, Chris Grime is a creator. Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, he's the creator of the popular, <laughs> excuse me. Actually, he's the creator, he's the author of Chicken Hair and Time Shifters. Uh, uh, he spends a lot of time drawing, writing, drinking coffee, collecting action figures. Uh, uh, Chris, um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the, the adaptation of this really kind of amazing pop culture franchise? Um, so do you mean like how I adapted it or just what? Just well, what well, I know it's super popular. Maybe you just, just for uh, maybe someone who isn't aware of it, just okay. like what the story is and... Uh... Sure, um, so the story kind of revolves around a group of kind of preteens uh, who, find themselves uh, on, the, on the wrong end of an alien invasion, and they are given the power to uh, change into any animal that they can touch. So as kind of like Earth's last defense against this, this kind of secret invasion that's going on behind, behind everybody's backs. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I, it, you know, I, obviously I'm just adapting it. So Catherine Applegate, uh, Michael Grant were the original yeah. authors of it. And uh, so it was, a bit of challenge. I've never adapted anything before, so I, I got as steeped in their in their world as I possibly could, you know. And uh, it was it's just been really fun to kind of take other people's stories and kind of bring them to life visually. Uh, it, but uh, it's, it's yeah, the the but it's a super popular franchise. It's yes, the animated ones are like fifty books in the series. I want to say there's like fifty four main title yeah. series, and then there's some <laughs> spinoffs too. It's Orc Vajir Chronicles. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> it's all it's all so much fun. And yeah. one of the things that I love about it so much is that I mean I, I get to draw aliens and spaceships and stuff. That's what I've always been into. But then there's the the very personal relationships between the kids and kind of they're just would they be normally going through, you know, this this stage kind of a growing up anyway. So they've already got things going on and then they're having to deal with you know fighting a, an invasion of aliens too on top of that so it's just it's been really fun to adapt and kind of you know not that I ever fought aliens in, in middle school or whatever but I do I can relate with the relationships and some of the situations that are going on and, and it's just been it's been really wonderful to be able to kind of do that so great all right well we're going to come back to you in a second too but let's switch now over to to Kristen um, uh, she's the creator uh, above the comic series Hinch Girls, but she's also the author of Making Friends, uh, Back to the Drawing Board, uh, and um, uh, the, the, her sequel to that book, her debut book, <clears throat> the sequel to the debut graphic novel, uh, Making Friends. So, um, uh, hey, Kristen, how you doing? Good. Hey, so tell us a little bit about uh, Making Friends, Back to the Drawing Board, and the original book. Uh, Making Friends, yeah. Um... So it, I'm working on, I've been working on this series for a while now. Um, it's about a girl who inherits a magical sketchbook and whatever she draws in it comes to life. 
So she uses it to draw the perfect best friend to make her popular at school and uh, hijinks ensue. And so it's a lot of stuff about friendship and fitting in, but also about <laughs> magic and like exploring your imagination. Um, yeah, and it seems that there seems to be a fair amount of, uh, uh, of, of story about being, being popular or not popular. Uh, um, uh, as, as you really come up with uh, your own take on the uh, magical schoolgirl. <laughs> well, it seems like in middle school is when being popular is the most important thing in the world. So I felt like, I don't know, when I was reminiscing about that time, I was like, this should be my theme because how do you talk to people when you're, you know, trying to get through school? <laughs> All right, all right, we're gonna jump down and talk with also Varian Johnson and Shannon Wright. So Varian, Varian Johnson is the author of, of, of nine novels for children and young adults, including The Parker Inheritance, uh, which won the, uh, the Coretta Scott King Honor Award. Uh, and Shannon Wright is an illustrator uh, based in, in Virginia and they are the uh, creators of Twins. Uh, so uh, let, let's, uh, let's start with uh, Varian and we'll talk with Shannon too. Tell us about twins. Uh, okay, twins is about mm, twins. I guess you can, you can assume. Uh, here's the cover. Here is about twin sisters Maureen and Francine. Uh, they've always been a pair. They've always been a duo. Uh, but then in middle school, things change, and Francine starts pulling away. She joins different clubs. She dresses differently. She goes by a short name Fran, and Maureen is just really not sure what to think about it. Uh, hijinks ensue, and they end up running against each other for sixth grade class president. Yeah, yeah, and I, the the sibling sibling rivalry uh, does reach a feed for pitch, especially I guess because they're twins. Yeah, 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 and I am a twin myself, so you know yeah. I never ran against my brother, but we certainly had mm -hmm. our share of issues as we were growing up and growing apart. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, well, let me, I'm going to jump to Shannon, but we're gonna we're gonna talk to you some more about uh, the experience of being a twin. Sure. Uh, so Shannon, um, what's it like? Um, tell us more about your comics career and working on Twins. Yeah, so um, my comics career kind of started um, back in college. I worked at my school newspaper. I was like editor in chief of that. So I was not only like making the comics for that, but I was like getting students to make comics every week. Um, and then wow. there was an anthology happening at our school too. So. I was just into comics. And then once I graduated, I was doing political comics. I was mm -hmm. uh, attending conventions and making my own comics. And so I was very familiarized with comics making and the process of going about doing that. But I had never, this is my debut graphic novel. So this is your first, this is your first uh, in booklet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is like, this is massive compared to, like little comic strips with like the nib and stuff like that. This is this is like night and day. Mm -hmm. So it was a little intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I knew what a graphic novel was, and I was like, oh yeah, they're, those are those are those are big boys. And then they it was it was a massive boy. So uh, <laughs> well, I, I I I enjoyed the, I know I enjoyed the experience <laughs> overall. But yeah, it was it was a lot of work, but I am in love with these characters. I enjoyed working with Varian. Uh, did I, you design them? How did how were the characters designed? Yeah, so yeah, I did design them. <coughs> um, so they look a little bit like me. I kind of base a lot of characters around me, like as like a starting point, or I just take little features and stuff. Um, but I did research on like twins currently on like Instagram. I did some research there, and also just like a lot of black girls and just black kids in general that I've met and just know from my family. And so I use that as like a starting point. And then all the characters in the story, they're, they're just based on people I have met or just like little, little, little things here and there. Like some characters, one character has dimples and stuff. And I was like, I had dimples. And then one character had braces and I was like, I had braces once. And then <laughs> <laughs> so right. it's just like, they're all me in a way. I love it. Okay, I love it. Well, it, it, that's you get pretty personal there. Love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Let's move down next. Uh, Maria. Now, Maria, best-selling author. You're an award-winning syndicated cartoonist. Uh, tell us more about uh, um, uh, the new book, 
and, and I'm because I'm, I'm avoiding mangling uh, the title. <laughs> Tell us more so, about the sequel to Not Nat Enough. So the, the sequel to Nat Enough is called Forget Me Nat. And uh, Nat Enough and Forget Me Nat both are based on a lot of my own personal childhood experiences, especially Nat Enough. Um, just like Natalie, I didn't feel like I ever fit in and I was focusing on who I wasn't instead of who I was. So as Natalie goes through that transformation, she has this idea of becoming more of who she is. And then Forget Me Nat picks up in the second half of the school year. And she has this absolutely giant crush on Derek. And it kind of takes over her life and creates friends with big drama with her current friends. And it's really a story about for not forgetting who you are. So being more of who you are and then remembering who you are. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, she really goes through uh, a trials trying to win uh, her best friend back, but she makes some new friends uh, uh, for sure. Um, well, now you, can, can you t tell us a little bit more about your, your cartooning career? Oh, absolutely. So uh, my comic Half Full just turned seven this year. Mm -hmm. So that's over 2,555 comics, even more because wow. I work very far ahead. So I've been doing a daily now um, for seven years. And I find a lot of humor in the trials of life, both in my comic and my books. And middle school is perfect for that. There's tons of difficult situations. And there's a lot of humor in at the intersection of fact and fiction as well. And I also like the idea of taking kind of heavy, dramatic topics and then infusing them with humor. And when I'm working on the book, every time I come to a page, my first thought is, how can I make this funnier? So there's a lot of like interesting, heavy topics that people experience and a lot of deep feelings, but then I try and kind of put a juxtaposition of humor on top of it. All right, and you do it very, very, very well too. All right, I'm gonna jump back to Chris. Um, let's talk a little bit more. Actually, I mean, you, uh, Chris, you, you, talk, you started talking a little bit about working to adapt this, uh, this amazing franchise, The Animorphs. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, how long have you been working on this? Um, do you know how many of the books you're going to adapt? Uh, for now, I'm, I'm on for uh, books one through three. Uh -huh. so, um, <clears throat> that, that's as far as I'm officially on board, but I would love it to be like, you know, as many more as they want. I'm just enjoying it so much. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm, I've already started, uh, you know, work on, on book two. And even though they're not my characters, I still feel extremely attached to them, uh, you know, and uh, protective of them too. So it's, it's, it was funny how quickly that happened because I wasn't sure at first when, I, when they asked me if I wanted to adapt basically somebody else's stuff. And I'd mostly up to that date just done my own thing written my own stories and characters and stuff so I was a little hesitant at first but uh, once I got started it's it's just been really wonderful it's been really good and, you know tell us a little bit more about your background uh, as a cartoonist uh as a cartoonist well I started uh when I was in I guess I went to college art I went to Kansas City Art Institute and from that point I kind of was focused on I wanted to do children's books I wanted to be a children's book illustrator and that's what I was kind of shooting for uh, Cause I always loved, I always loved that, uh, that, you know, book I bought, I have more picture books than my kids do. And, um, you know, but from there, so once I graduated college, I actually worked at Hallmark uh, designing uh, humorous cards and stuff for about 15 years. And while I was there kind of as a, kind of a side kind of a thing I always wanted to do is get into comics. So it was a good, seemed like a good opportunity to just try some, some stuff out. So I've been doing comics for about 15 years now, almost 16 years. And, uh, over the last six years, I've been like full, full-time comics. So mm -hmm. it's been, yeah. it's, yeah, it's good. And, and one, one quick question, how do you work with, do you, do you work closely with the original um, authors uh, of the series? Do you, you guys exchange notes or do they kind of just let you do your thing and check it out later? Well, I think uh, I had to turn in like sketches for the entire book, like the entire, mm -hmm. all the, all the interior uh, pages. So uh, it's my understanding that that was then passed off to Catherine and Michael who got to see it and I was expecting some notes like like you know how dare you uh I, you know uh these are my children kind of a thing uh but th they just been so wonderful and uh they were like yeah that looks that looks good that's fine and I've had I got very little notes from them I had a few notes from you know my editor and stuff and but but they've just been extremely wonderful to work with great all right all right let's jump to Kristen again so Kristen you know look you're uh um Danny's got some pretty, you've got some pretty amazing plot lines here, crazy, uh, crazy interactions, uh, 
and your drawings uh, are kind of inherently comical. I mean, whether whether there's dialogue or not, you I, I find myself chuckling. So I mean, can you talk? Tell us a little bit about um, coming up with plots. I mean, you know, um, obviously uh, there's a lot of homework that gets done by magic, but uh, you you come up with even more elaborate uh, scenarios. Where do your ideas come from? Honestly, it just comes from when I was little. I used to legitimately um daydream about having a magical sketchbook wow. that anything I drew into it came to life and I would you know how like people would ask you what would you do if you got a genie like I would like sit down with those thoughts and like really work them out just in case like anything happened and like I got a genie and I like had to make like a perfect wish so when I was younger I just spent so much time working out all the things I wanted um, and it's funny because then when you become an adult, you have money and you're like, I can buy things now. But when I was a kid, I would have been really like way more excited about this. Um, <laughs> so like, it's kind of just me imagining my younger self and what I would do if I had <laughs> omnipotence. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just following that to its logical Make your conclusion. own friends. Yeah, there you go. Why not? <laughs> um, well, and me, tell us tell us a little bit about your drawing because I detect a manga, you know, influence. Uh, uh, am I? Oh correct? yeah, definitely, totally. Um, I I got into comics from reading manga. Um, when I was younger, I, I saw like you know American comics, and I saw it was just like looked like all these like airbrushed, muscly people, and I was like. No, thanks. I just like wasn't into it. Now I, I've read some of it and I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, I like Western comics. But at the time, the aesthetics and like just the emotional purity of manga where you're like, I know exactly what feeling this is evoking yeah. because it's evoking it at like a thousand percent. That really appealed to me because um, I also just like really like strong emotions and stuff because I like books and comics that make you get in touch with your emotions, whether it's awful cringe or sadness or happiness and all that stuff so yeah definitely um it, Rumiko Takahashi who did like wow. Ronmo and Half and Inuyasha and I read all her comics because like in the 90s that's kind of what was available but it was so extremely good and I had a limited budget so I would just reread the same volumes of manga over and over okay, again <laughs> well American otaku I can tell yes all right <laughs> Okay. Okay. Great. We're going to jump now to Varian again. So Varian, tell us about, I mean, can you tell, obviously your experience informed the, the book here, um, uh, Twins. Uh, tell us more. What's it like being a twin? You know, um, folks ask me that all the time and I, I don't know because I've never not been a twin, <laughs> right? So um, I will say my brother and I are really close. We're even really close now. But I think what's interesting is that if the world looked at, looks at us, looked at us back then and even now, they would see us as being 90% the same. You know, we, we, mm -hmm. we not only from looks, but you know, kind of what we enjoy doing, our hobbies, our pastimes, things like that. But when we look at ourselves, we feel like we're so opposite. We feel so strongly different from each other. It, it has never felt like I'm looking in the mirror and looking at my other half or, or anything like that. We feel just as, just as, as much as two distinct people as, as anyone else. And were, were you competitive together? I mean, maybe not, like you said, running against each other for a student for a student council, but in other ways? Yes and no. Like we yeah. were competitive um, academically and maybe sometimes when it came to dating, you know, oh. you know, if we ever wanted to like go after the same girl, they were, oh. there were challenges. Right. Um, but- um, book. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> But I will say, you know, usually that's just between us, but like against the world, it is us against the world. And I will defend him to the death sure. against anyone. And he's the same way. Sure. All right. Uh, Shannon, real quickly, did, did you talk about your influences? What what influences you? Uh, what comics were your, your big influences uh, uh, as an artist and just as a fan? Um. So definitely manga. I... Uh, grew up reading a lot of manga. Um, my dad was into like Marvel and stuff and I like appreciated that. But whenever I got to go to Borders, I was like manga. Yes, we're going to manga. I, I was like consuming uh, Bleach and I was consuming Naruto. I could not <laughs> get right. enough of Naruto. I was like doing the hand signs and everything. <laughs> so, 
So again, so, back to what Kristen was saying, I was just like, so these tattoo characters. on parade, yes, okay. Exactly, <laughs> so those are my influences. And then just currently, um, uh, Gail, who also does work for uh, graphics, big influence, love how Gail just like portrays characters and emotions. So I, I will definitely say like, since this was my first like big project, I used Gail as a roadmap because I was just like, Gail is doing exactly what I want to do. So thanks, Gail. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, Maria. Yes. I, I, who, what were some of your uh, your influences, your favorite uh, comics? Or, so when I, oh, sorry, okay. so when I was a little kid, I was I was a, I was Sunday Funnies comic strip. I would read every single comic in the Sunday paper every single week, and I was a massive Garfield fan when I was a little uh -huh. kid. And I had every single book when it came out, and I would study them. And strangely enough, I'm on a panel with Jim Davis next week which means I need a time machine Ow. to go back in time Ow. to my eight-year-old self and say, you're never going to believe this because um, it was such an influence. And then I love Peanuts. I was a huge Chuck Jones fan um, and all the Bugs Bunny comics. And I think his, his expressions and the little subtleties in his animation are just so brilliant. Um, so, and I love the simplicity of the line work, but like deceptively simple work. So, and I was also a big Clyban, I'm probably saying it wrong, um, fan and Farside mm -hmm. fan as a kid. Sure. And I also love uh, the French cartoonist Sampe, and I love Roz Chast, and I love Linda Barry. Like, it's an endless it's favorite is tough, but- It's a comic book stew you got it going. It is. I have yeah. the most eclectic bookshelf. Um, and yeah. I like little bits from all these different um, places that influence me, so. All right. Okay, well, okay. well, look, now we've got a good sense of the, everybody's background, where you're coming from, you know, what your nerd tendencies are, you know, <laughs> I've got- I've basically exposed you all, so the fans know you now. Uh, so let's do some drawing. Hey, that's you, you guys tell stories, but you but you use drawings to do it, and you do it as as well as anybody. I'm gonna jump back to Chris, so we're gonna have a draw off. And I think what I've suggested uh, uh, is that all of you draw. I'm gonna go down. I want to stop at each each uh, uh, talk with each of you. Get one of you drawing, and then go to the next one, and then we'll go back and. And, uh, and and have you talk a little bit about the drawings. So let's let's start with Chris. Okay, and I'm gonna adjust my screen here because I'm gonna Great, there to you go. get it closer to my, I was testing so, this out before, so. Okay, so tell us what you wanna draw. What, what character and you know. I'm gonna draw two of the kids from Animorphs, Jake and Marco, uh, just, their, just their faces. And they were, they were uh, some of my favorites and it's probably just cause I was a boy, um, but um, I'll, yeah, I'm gonna know, get I'll, you going. I'm gonna get you going, and then I'm gonna jump to Kristen. Just, uh, but so yeah, just, just lead us into it. It looks like a nose. Yep. So All I'm right. Just gonna, I'm, yeah. So. I'll do, I'll do uh, like color commentary on the side. So yeah. So I think he's heading over uh, to the uh, do a profile here, sort of three quarters. Okay. Yeah. And this is this is gonna be Jake. Yeah. Yeah. This is gonna be Jake, and you guys don't get to judge me on my eyes because they usually <laughs> take me three or four tries to get them right, so. Okay, okay, so we're gonna let you work on that <laughs> while you're working on the eyes, um, and we'll try not to judge. I'm gonna jump <laughs> to Kristen. Okay, guys, I've got, um, oh no, I already drew a line, I didn't mean to do. Um, I usually start out by drawing a little circle, generally just where I want the character's face to be. And then and I just- drawing? Which character? This, this is gonna be Danny and Madison. Um, from making friends. Madison is the magical girl, so she has like anime hair, okay. which is like these like long strand things. And Danny is the normal girl, and she has a more round face. Okay, all right. You keep you keep doing that. Yeah. All right, I'm jumping to Check Shannon. Check back. <laughs> I'm gonna jump to Shannon. So yes. Shannon. So I'm going to actually just be drawing uh, the twins, uh, Marine and Francine. Um, because despite all the drama, uh, they are still best friends. So I'm going to be drawing them and I'm gonna start with Maureen first um, over here. And again, don't judge me. Like it's, it's kind of hard to draw twins. Makeup. Okay, all right. No judgments. Yeah, no judgments. <laughs> no judgment, but intense scrutiny. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So with there you go, right there. No pressure, maybe, sort. All right. I start with like a little lima bean face. 
<laughs> okay, we're gonna come, we're gonna come back and see how that lima bean develops. All right, so uh, Varian, hold on a second. I'm gonna jump to uh, Maria. All right, so um, what you gonna draw, Maria? I'm gonna draw Natalie and uh, her best friends, Zoe and Flo. So I'm gonna see if I can pull off drawing all three of them together all right. right now. We want to see you get started here. So lead us yes. in. Lead us yeah, I always start with eyes. Cool. No matter who it is. Um, and then, you know, for Natalie, I feel like I know who she is right away by those glasses and those eyes. So that's where I start with all the characters. Yeah, that, that, it's shaping up. Okay. Okay, well, while you're doing that, I want to jump. I would just a quick question to Varian, because sure. uh, I don't want him just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. Uh, uh, tell us about your literary queer. Just br briefly, give us, a, I mean, right. you've published, what, nine novels? Uh, the career, you know, I mean, you, yeah. yeah. Is this your first graphic novel? This is my first graphic novel. I, I grew up loving reading. I loved comic books. I loved uh, Marvel and DC. Grew up on X-Men. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I, you know, I love that I'm able to draw a lot of different type things. Um, so I've written YA and I've written middle grade. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the Parker Inheritance, which won the Coretta Scott King honor, was just a real, um, I don't know, it felt really, it was a really great moment in my career because the book did really well and was celebrated. But also I get so many emails from kids who love reading the book um, as well and talking about what they what they think about it. Um, so yeah, I guess it has been nine. It's a, I don't even know the right number anymore. It's, 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 man. <laughs> it's been, a, it's a good number of books. It's a good little run here. And obviously it's always great to see, you know, uh, 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 characters of color, to see African-American colors. I mean, like the whole range uh, we seem to be in a period now where people understand that this just makes, you know, all of uh, the publishing world and the reading world that much richer. So, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'll add, yeah, it is. And, and now we're, we're even we're moving into this diversity and inclusion 2.0 or even 3.0, where we can see all of this, this wide variety of characters of color in different situations. It's not just tied to one or two points yeah. in history or one and two stereotypical situations. Um, we're seeing them just across the spectrum. And I think that's just a magical, wonderful thing. Well, actually, you know, when we come back to Shannon's drawing, actually, maybe you can tell us, as you say, all different walks of life, different contexts, uh, different sure. school contexts, and maybe you can put this all in the context. So let's sure. jump to, let's see what Chris is doing. Let's go back to the beginning here and see what Chris is doing. Hey, Chris. Hi. How's it coming? Oh, yeah. Hey, this is shaping up. Hi. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Those eyes look great, Chris. Thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, you, you're, you're trashing your eye drawing, but your eye drawing looks pretty good to me. Well, I got really lucky this time, and usually it's not this good. Usually I got my hand on the Command-Z button on my on my uh, keyboard, and I'm constantly redoing them, so, so I don't know Tell us about the two characters in, that you're drawing and you know how they kind of show up in the book. All right, well, these two guys, this is Jake and Marco, and Jake and Marco are like best friends um, prior to, prior to the, the uh, alien invasion and afterwards, but the, uh, there's kind of a, you know, and being best friends uh, and then having dynamics change around you where one friend maybe goes on to, or not really leaves or goes on, but just is, does, diff, you know, into different things. So Jake kind of becomes the, uh, the leader of, of the uh, Animorphs kids, even though he's a little reluctant about it, but Marco isn't really into doing it. And so there's, uh, he, he kind of just doesn't want to, he doesn't want to risk his life um, or, or, or that of his families or, or anything. And they, they both have very valid points, but there's some head butting, but at the end of the day, they're still friends and they kind of work through it. You know, they know how to talk to each other to calm each other down or explain something better that maybe you know if, if it was an adult talking to them or somebody they don't know maybe it would it would come off a little bit more harsh so th they have a real good kind of a a buddy thing going on in the books and i and i really like that i've tried to play that up when i'm when i've been adapting it so any any chance i get to have them just have a kind of a normal conversation that boys this age might have um i try to do that sorry i got a timer going on. in between fighting aliens yeah in between <laughs> fighting aliens yeah and it's just uh it's just been really fun i mean they're all, I love all the characters. Um, Cassie, I thought I'd have way more trouble drawing Cassie and uh, Rachel this morning though. So I thought I would just do these guys. Were you a fan of the series uh, yourself when you were growing up? I, well, the series came out and started in 96, which I would have, I graduated high school in 95. So, um, and 
I was very aware of them. I mean, those covers are so iconic. I was very aware of them because we used to go to the bookstores all the time, Barnes and Noble and stuff, mm -hmm. where I was looking at children's books constantly. And, you know, these were in that section and I would see them. And I remember reading a little bit of the first, the invasion book, but at the time, you know, I'm in college and I got things I got to be doing besides getting lost in a 54 book series. Um, and so what happened was, is I never really got to return to it. Um, just, you know, just life in general. And then when, so when this opportunity came up, I was, I remember I, I spit coffee all over my laptop when they asked me if, when, when, first they asked, you know, if I'd be interested in adapting a series. And I was like, well, what's the series? And when they told me, I spit coffee on my laptop and I thought I might have ruined it because it wasn't a little bit of coffee. I had just taken a full like swig of coffee and then I read the email, which was a mistake. Um, <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah. But, got total immersion boy now, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, let's jump, let's jump to Kristen and see where, uh, where she's at. <laughs> I finished. <laughs> Check All it right. out. Look, it's, I even colored them in. I had like some highlighters on my desk. All Here right. they and, are. <laughs> and I love the, the label over it. But yeah, tell us about the friendship. I mean, this is an unusual <laughs> friendship. Yeah, totally. Um, well, Madison is kind, is a, like, kind of a magical girl, hence the pink hair. Um, every single book I do has a character who, with magic powers and pink hair, and I have to like stop doing that in everything I write, otherwise I'm going to be predictable. It's your um, trademark. <laughs> yes. No, like for real, in Hench Girl, there's a magical girl with pink hair. Um, she is, she came from a magical sketchbook. Um, she was designed to be the coolest best friend ever, and she is sort of based off of my big sister when she's nice. Because when I was in eighth, eighth, seventh grade, my sister uh, was a few years older than me going through uh, puberty and was very angry. <laughs> but like when she was nice, she was really cool. And also like my best friend in eighth grade, who was also just super cool. So I kind of like put those two in a blender and added a couple like anime girl characteristics. And that's how Madison came to be. <laughs> okay. Well, they, well, they, I know they... I just, I know that the uh, uh, um, Danny and her their their situation has changed. It's more dynamic, uh, <laughs> um, and as 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 has been said several times, high jinx and sue. <laughs> All right, All right. Let's jump down and see what Shannon's got for us. So I have the girls here. Here they are. Yeah, I. I lucked up today because they they look more alike than I have drawn them in the past together. <laughs> well, they look so like we have, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So we have Maureen here, um, and then we have Francine here, and they're practically you know the same except um, Francine has her ears pierced and has like a tiny scar, just the tiniest scar. But other than that, identical. Very twins. nice. Uh, Baron, you want to comment on? I, other than it's great, I learned a long time ago to let Shannon be Shannon and let her do her thing. Um, I think they're great. And also she made, um, it looks like uh, Francine's a little bit taller than Maureen too. So there's these little ticks that Shannon incorporated into the story to help readers kind of differentiate who's who. Although like I always, when I look at them, I feel like they're my kids. I always know which one is which one, no matter what. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the, you know, the, the school context that they're in at the, uh you know, in the book? Uh, Shannon, do you wanna handle that? Uh, yeah, so um, the school context, so pretty much uh, we decided to make this story take place in Texas uh, based on where Varian currently lives. And we had the chance to, I feel like do something special. So the school and just the friend group is primarily black and brown. Um, so I think that's very special because we don't really see that often portrayed, especially just in like comics and just like middle grade. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's but You know, it. Shannon, also you did this great job and you talked about it before where we got this primarily Brown friendship group, but like they all are different. So it's a great, it's diversity within diversity. So light skin, mm -hmm. dark skin, curly hair, high tops, whatever the case and, and body size too. And mm -hmm. I was just really amazed that you took all that into account when creating all of the friends. Yeah, I mean, I was just trying to think about what middle school looked like to me and everyone was, you had the kids that came with the fresh cuts and then you had the, the messy hair everywhere. So I was just trying to implement what I remember from middle school, so. Well, they're really great drawings throughout, really great color too, a lot of fun. Thank um, you. Uh, uh, 
I'm a fan. Okay. Uh, next, let's jump to Maria. Okay, so I have uh, Natalie with her two there closest friends, Zoe and Flo. And uh, Zoe is really an amalgam of all of like friends I've had through life, like the best qualities, that, like the best possible friend you can have. And Flo is a really funny character. She's sort of this guru that comes out with these really profound statements that surprise me often. Um, so she has this sort of, you think she's sort of clueless because she can't see where she's going, but she's got the most profound, deep intelligence about the world, so. Great, all right, great. <laughs> great, well, you know, well, tell us a little bit more. I mean, did you mention um, the, the story? I mean, I love the, the, the so much of the story is, is her developing a crush and then getting over the crush. I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about that, about, you know, how these, how her friends help her and, and all of that? Yeah, actually, she ends up creating some friend drama because she ends up spending so much time being involved with this crush that she stops spending as much time with her friends. Yeah. So it takes a little bit of a, a drama thing to get through that. And also, Flo's going through an election. It's, it's an election at school. And it's this idea of kind of Flo voting for herself. And that kind of echoes into Natalie's life of kind of remembering who she is and sort of, you know, being true to herself, regardless of anybody else's opinion of her, primarily the crush who doesn't really feel the same way. Yes, yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> it's, it, there are emotional uh, instructions in between uh, the laughs and hijinks for sure. That's uh, right. So look, well, look at that. So, hey, look, let's, let's just cycle through. I think you all have to speak so your screen will jump up. Let's cycle through just to get a quick uh, last look at all of the drawings, and then we're gonna. I've got. I'm gonna throw some questions out to all of you from uh, our 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 listening and viewing audience. So, wow, that looked great. You 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 <laughs> modeled the figure there, Chris. So they're really hopping out. Yeah. Um, yeah, this turned out better than I thought it was gonna be. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna go down the line. So, uh, Kristen, let's see yours. Hey, I'll write the word yay. There you go. <laughs> All right, terrific. All right, and let's see. All right, okay, let's jump down to Shannon's one more time. Take a look at that. Say something, Shannon, so the screen will, will jump to you. Yes, yeah, so again, we have the twin girls here, Marina Francine. Love now, it. This, this, this is, this is a... Uh, the good point where they're actually liking each other compared to <laughs> go through various uh, challenges for sure. All right. And uh, Maria, let's see you. So, one last time. Yep. So I've got Natalie and Flo, Natalie and Zoe. Love it. Closest of friends. Love it. Okay. So hey, we're winding down, but we've still got some time here. So let's see, here's one, uh, here's a question from the audience here. Um, how did you decide? And this is, this is for all of you. We'll go down the line. Here, how, uh, how do you decide which parts of the story need more text and which part do you let the art do your thing, do its thing? So since you're, since you're on the screen right now, Maria, let's just, we'll just go with you. Hey, how, do you how do you make those kind of determinations? Well, I think it's sort of an organic thing that happens in the process, but I feel like things that have deep emotions or subtle expressions, I kind of like to leave those panels on their own because that's one thing I love about graphic novels. There's this extra layer of nuance where you can really see feelings. So those are sort of the screens that I like to leave without text. Yeah, another thing you do that's really funny, and I think others may do a variation on this, is that I call it the sort of graphical index page where you know you do a character and then there's a lot of listing about this their hair their, the style you know and, and it's a combination of information and entertainment it's comical and it's like a one page thing that kind of carries the story along and i know you you uh it, that shows up a lot in your books yeah i love doing that it's fun and then that's another level of humor and since natalie uses her sketchbook kind of as like another le level of what she's thinking it gives you kind of a second look into her perspective right all right, let's jump to, to Chris. So yeah, how, Chris, how do you how do you balance that out? Well, they, the, I mean, comics are the seamless combination of words and pictures, but you know, how do you make it seamless? Well, I've always I've always heard, or at least it stuck with me too. I, I'd heard it at some point that the, uh, the more words and balloons you have on a page, the the slower the reader is going to be on that page. So if you want to slow things down, uh, either very very high detail or more words and balloons, so. Um, then on scenes that you would like to speed up, it can be, you know, far less words and stuff. 
uh, less detail in the background and stuff. It makes for a quicker read. So that's that's how I try to slow things down as much as possible or speed things up. I mean, if there's not a lot of dialogue to be had in a particular scene that I need to slow down, then I'll I'll try to make sure that the the backgrounds and the characters have just as much detail as I can put on there that you know that still makes them feel like they they fit with the rest of the the panels and stuff. But uh, that's basically how I do it. Um, if the if it if the scene needs more weight, then I'll make sure it slows down a little bit. All right. Kristen, how do you uh, I, this technical problem? I agree with what Chris says. I think that's really true. Uh, I was reading um, Dragon Ball Z. I read the entirety of Dragon Ball Z in, in like a week, <laughs> only because my Shonen Jump app kept being like, you've reached the limit of how many issues you can read. And I was like, wow, there's like five words per page and I'm reading it really fast and it's so exciting. And I think that that's a huge thing. It's like, if you're having a part that you want people to be just like, super like just like tearing through and then you put less text and if you want people to stop and contemplate you can like slow things down with text but um I personally I mean there's no rules obviously as soon as someone says don't put so much text then like someone else will put a bunch of text and it'll work really well but I like less text because um I just know um that when I open a comic and I see tons and tons of like word boxes, I'm like, mm, just come on, just show me this in the art. I, I want like, I want there to be a nice sort of like only one or two sentences per speech bubble or per panel, um, just you to keep things going. Manga and express and its ability to be very super expressive. So yeah, you know, on the visual it side. And if you look at manga, you'll see that there's not so much text. In fact, oftentimes someone will be like, I'm thinking about this boy I like and like that sentence will take up like four pages <laughs> which I don't do that because that takes it takes so long to draw a page that you're like okay well let's find a happy spot between like making it balanced but also like the thing about keeping things subtle in terms of like if you draw a panel of someone looking sad and you're like I am sad in like a text box you're like okay you don't really need that because it shows it but when you're doing kids stuff sometimes you do need that because your readers are younger and you need to help them along. So I always try to keep that in mind, especially with making friends. Whereas with Hench Girl, I might um, just be like, oh, I trust you, either you get this or too bad um, with making friends. I try to be a little bit more forgiving of my like my little kids. <laughs> Another very funny series, uh, Hench Girl, if you haven't read it, check it out. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, uh, so yeah, so Shannon. And, and and Shannon and Varian. So we've got the we've got the writer, we've got the artist. I mean, how do you you know? Does he try to cram too many words on the page? Do you have to like wait, wait a minute, guy? What what do you? I how mean, do you negotiate that? I I would say maybe in the very beginning, um, we had conversations about that, but Varian like picked it up very fast and was just like, "Yeah, you're right. Let's let's cut that or let's let's um." take out some of that text and just rely on the art to do the work and the expressions and stuff. I think there was a few times where I mentioned a variant. I was just like, well, you can just have like silent moments and stuff. Like I, I personally, with like comics and in films, I like um, sitting in that silence. Um, and I think it is really impactful to a story and just conveying feelings and whatnot. So um, yeah, uh, we, we like went back and forth a little bit, but um, for the most part, it wasn't it wasn't too much text, um, just like a few slashes here and there. But Varian, yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting. Um, just this 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 seamless collaboration of of art and text. You know, you hope it's seamless in the book, but like you know, you got to churn through it as you're you're developing the story. But there were a couple. Like I've got the book here, right? So I'm gonna do some show and tell. And yeah. so like this page here where was one where originally I had captions on there and we talked through it and we said, you know what? We don't actually need captions for this scene to get across what's happening. Same thing here. I don't think this one ever had text on it, but it's this great kind of scene of Maureen in the cafeteria trying to figure out where she's going to sit. And I think it is really about thinking about those moments, thinking about when you have absolutely have to say something and when you don't. And um, I don't know, I love the, the process of doing it and then, you know, cutting. I like to go overboard and then cut back later on. That's just kind of my writing process anyway. And it, and it worked well for us, hopefully. Great. A cafeteria layout is so great, by the way. I just have to say. Thank you. 
that is a great sequence for sure. So let's see now. Hey, did I start this with, with Maria? Yes. I did. In this section, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look, we're we're winding down here. Uh, this has been really a lot of fun. You know, we, I think I can squeeze one last question in uh, really quickly. And one of the questions is, what's your favorite graphic book series aside from your own book? So <laughs> there you go. Who do you like that's not you <laughs> at graphics? <laughs> I mean, I can I can start by saying, uh, I mean, if we're just going to jump in, I love Gail. I just yes, okay. <laughs> As you have mentioned, great. All right. I'm a fan of, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Go, go, go. I was just going to say, uh, I've always I was always a big fan of Jeff Smith, uh, Bone, which I think a lot of people are, but that was really my entry point to into comics too. So okay. I love everything he does. Love it. Love it. Okay. Great. Uh, Kristen, did I did you? I could say so. I uh, also I love Gail. Gail Galligan's uh, Babysitters Club books are really great, and her her Garfield cool. comics are also awesome. Reina obviously does really good like slice of life comics. There's Super a lot stars. to choose from. Superstars. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and did you, that, Maria? Yeah, uh, that's a, the favorite thing. Is always a tough question. Um, I also love Reina's books. I love the Dogman books. I love Jerry Kraft's books. I'm looking forward to seeing his next one coming out soon. So. Yeah, there's so many. It's hard to condense it into just. It's cool. I've seen it. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'll say really quickly, like I, I will say, everyone's mentioned Raina and I love Raina and I love her books, but it's really great because my daughter loves them as well too. So we can read them and talk about them together, uh, especially sisters because she's got a younger sister. Um, it, it's been it's been great. Okay. All right. Well, look, we're winding down here. Uh, I want to thank uh, Vary and Shannon, Maria, Kristen, Chris. Uh, everyone, please remember, apparently you can order books. There should be a link somewhere. I should have said that <laughs> earlier. I apologize. Uh, please consider making a donation uh, to the Brooklyn Book Festival, which is celebrating its 15th year presenting free literary programming. Uh, and um, look, thanks to all of you. Uh, the books are, are delight. They're fun. Uh, if you like drawing, you can't go wrong. If you like good storytelling, you can't go wrong. Uh, and, um, and plus, you're all fun to talk to. So, <laughs> so good luck on the books, and thank you. Uh, thank you. I hope thank I didn't you. screw everything up. Hope I didn't get in the way. That was thanks so much, Calvin. All you right, were great. that was great. Thank, thank you. You, you were All great. Right. So great. I think we did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For as close as could be expected. Nailed it. <laughs> all right. Great to great to talk to all of you. You too. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.